Hi and welcome. I'm John and this is Unique War Gaming Terrain. Guys, welcome back. For everyone that's new, this is a Let's Build video. What are Let's Build videos and what are they about? Well, basically I take a model kit and I'll show you guys how to build it. This helps you if you suffer with dyslexia or just struggle with instructions in general. It's a visual way to help you out. If there's anything wrong on the sprue, as in the instructions say one thing, but the sprue says something different, number-wise. Again, this is a heads up for you guys, so you know that so you're not there scratching your head, so you know the way it goes. If there's some parts of the model that are very complicated and baffle you, like, for example, um, Angron's base and his rocks, uh, the cloak from what was uh, so called Wadsnagger, there's two, two that have been mentioned to me. The Chaos Chosen, there's another one. Someone got them from eBay and there was no instructions. This is a visual way to help you out. Now, if you're interested in certain models and you think they're too hard to build, I'll show you how easy they are, make them more accessible to you. If you're interested in a new faction, but you don't know if the models are difficult to build or what way it is, and you don't want to spend you know, money buying something and you sit on your shelf for months and months because you have no confidence in building it, this is a visual way to help you guys out. So for all my regulars here, guys, I feel love. Thank you very much. I'll see you in a second. Right, so what am I building today? Today I'm going to build a Chaos Spaceman Lord in Terminator Armour. Now this is a, a very amazing model. As you see, it's actually fantastic. But one thing I love about this model, you can have it as a Chaos Sorcerer in Terminator Armour. So both, both of them, either this one or this one, actually two fantastic models. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pop it open and we're going to start looking at the sprue and go through normal stuff. Right, so as always, tools needed. Mold line scraper. Now you can use a hobby knife or some sort of surgical blade. If you're using a bladed instrument, be careful because it's sharp. And just let anyone else know in the house that you're using it so nobody scares you. Clippers, most useful part of our tool that we have. I also have sanding sponge. This is actually sanding block. Yeah which is basically sponge with sandpaper around it. I do have this other version of it, which is a lot easier to get into bits and pieces. Now you can find this in hobby, in a hardware shop between the um, painting decorating sandpaper in that sort of area. Sometimes it's with sandpaper, sometimes it's painting decorating, like lining paper and all sort of stuff. Sometimes it's in between the two. Here's a plastic kit, so plastic glue. I do have super glue at hand just in case I need to use it. So before we start looking at the sprue, we're going to look at the, st the stat lines of stuff. So chaos, well, it's actually this is saucer in terminator armor. This is the norm normal lord in terminator armor. So movement five in terminator, of course it is. Two plus weapon skill, two plus ballistic skill. So it's two plus in combat, two plus some shooting. Strength four. Toughness for seven wounds, which is quite nice. Six attacks, sleeves with ten, and two plus armor save. He is going to have an invulnerable save because he's in terminal armor. Now, his weapon options. Option one is a combust, is a storm bar basically. It's a combat bolt weapon. Rapid fire two, 24 inch range, strength four, AP zero, and one damage piece. Okay. Um, the second one is a combo, looks like a combo flamer, combo melter. Something like that. Oh, that's our melt gun. But it's 24 inch range, it's bolt, it says bolter, 24 inch range, rapid fire one. Strength four, zero P, one damage piece, or the melt will come, or the melter side of it is 12 inch range, assault one, strength eight, minus four AP, and D6 damage, which is quite tasty. He's got just like two chainsaws combined together, so actually, I've seen it on the sprue, it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, it's close combat weapon, times two strength, minus four AP. So times two strength, I'm just going to make it strength eight. Minus four AP and D3 damage. And that's per attack. And he has six attacks, so that's quite quite tasty. Number four is plus two strength. This is chain X, I think it is, or just a normal power X. Plus two strength, minus two AP, and two damage apiece. And again, so that still makes it strength six. Number five is his lightning claws. Which is strength as of the user, which is uh, 
strength four. Um, minus two AP, so one damage a piece. So they're not that great, but I'd imagine in tenth edition they would have um, some sort of special organism, tank destruction, and all that sort of stuff. Um, number six is a normal power fist, which is not so much spread. Looks like the middle finger sticking up. It's actually brilliant. It's times two strength, so again strength eight minus three AP, and it's two damage a piece. But I'd imagine that'd be minus one to hit because it's a power fist. It's all in, you know, hard to maneuver. Right, so the sorcerer's weapons, you can move the, you know, like, movement five, his term now, of course, it is three plus weapon skill, three plus ballista skill, strength four, toughness four, six wounds, five attacks, leadership nine, two up armor save. He would have an invulnerable save because he's in terminating armor. First combo is the same as the other one, which is a storm, the bolter bolter combo. Next one's the melter combo, melter bolter combo. He's gonna have the axe. Or you can have a staff. The axe is not the axe is the same as the other one. Or you can have a staff. The staff is plus three to his strength, makes him strength seven, minus one AP and D three damage a piece. Because he's a sorcerer, you'll get psychic attacks as well. So it's a very difficult choice for what way to go. Right, so as always, everyone that's new, what we do now is we look at the sprue and we try and ascertain what's what and just break the sprue up for ourselves, make it a lot easier. So straight away, look at this little devious thing. That's actually lovely. <laughs> it's like a little demon thing holding a sword. There's a sorcerer head. There's a spell book there. That looks, that looks absolutely fantastic. That spell book, even if you don't use that on, you know, on this model, that could be used um, in your legionary, in your chaos legionaries, or you can use it on a hero, or you can use it on another sorcerer, or something like that. It's absolutely fantastic. Could even probably use that for fantasy because it's just just a book. There's the wizard's staff. There's trophy racks. You just there's trophy racks. There's some sort of loin cloth. There's some skulls and some heads. There's another trophy rack with a space marine the dark angel helmet on it and a tuned helmet. There's a what is the ass head? There's the two pale fists or lightning claws, I say. But they're not actually lightning claws, they're just they're clawed hands, so they're fantastic. There's the one sticking the middle finger up. <laughs> That's fantastic. That looks like body piece. And there's three shoulder pads there. You're only going to need two for this model, so you have an extra shoulder pad left over for something else, which is nice. Now here we go. Base. There's the back of his body. From his cloak, there's some chains, there's some more little chainy bits. There's an amazing head there. There's a couple of unhelmeted heads. I think that one's the one that's on the box. There's some other little bits of trophy. There's the legs, or the start of the legs, shall I say. That looks like the body, back in the, the front part. Yeah, I think the key, this is the Chaos Lord. I think the Chaos Sorcerer one is the other one, but it still doesn't really matter either way. There's that amazing chain, the twin link chain. I think that's supposed to be a chain fist or something like that, but that's actually brilliant. I actually really, really like that. There's the melt or bolter combo or melt to chain sword, bolter combo, wherever it is. Yeah, there's the bolt gun underneath. And there's the melt. Again, that's still fantastic. That's brilliant. There's the axe. There's the bolter bolter combo. The size of that is amazing. It's based on some little spiky right there. So it seems pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish setting up and start finding the first piece that we need, and I'll come back to you then. Right, so I've actually gone. I've decided to do the Chaos Lord. Okay, I do like the Chaos um, Sorcerer in Terminal. I think that's absolutely fantastic. But I've decided to do the Chaos Lord. So the first pieces needed are the two legs and the body part. Now none of this sprue is numbered. Okay, so this has got an S there, that's it, none of it's numbered. So this is where this is where these type of videos really help out. So I'm gonna snip the two legs off and snip this piece off, and I'll come back to you, clean them down and I'll come back to you then. All right, some horrible mold lines on this body part, but it doesn't matter. When you're putting these any model together, if you've cleaned it all down and you've got it together and you go once it's all you go, oh look, I missed a bit there, missed a bit there, don't panic. 
because when it's still dry, you can go back in with some sandpaper and just give it a gentle sand down or a yarpy knife. Now, this leg here has a little bit coming up like that. And as you can see there, that just slots into there. Very straightforward. And the other one has the opposite. It has like a little groove in the middle there. And there's a little groove bit there. So that just slots in there like that. So I'm going to glue those two into place and then come back for the next piece. Now, so the next pieces we need is cloak and these two pieces. Okay. So I'm going to snip those two off and the cloak, clean them all down and come back and show you how they go together. Now, so this is really straightforward. This piece goes into there, as you'd expect. This piece then, there's two little bits up there. There's two little bits at the top there. That just slots into there. Like so. Okay, so I'm going to glue those three pieces, three pieces together and then come back and show you the next piece. Right, so the next bit we need is the trophy rack. Now the instructions for the Lord to take these two. But you could easily take these two or you could do one of these and one of these because at this point the body's all the same. Okay. Actually no it's not, sorry. That's a different body. Yeah, but that shouldn't affect, that shouldn't affect what trophy rack, because the trophy racks sit on the back here. Trophy racks sit up on that little, that little line there. So that, that front piece is not going to affect anything there. So yeah, you you can use whatever ones you want. I'm going to go with these two, just because there's a lot of, a lot of bits and pieces that can be done on there. So I'm going to slip those off, clean those down, and show you how they go on, which is very straightforward. And then the body goes onto the legs. So I'll, I'll show you all that at the same time. Right, so it's very straightforward. Don't worry about those little bits at the bottom there, because when I put glue on there, they're going to come off. But one side, there's like a little groove in it. Yeah, the other side's flat. The side with the groove in goes against the terminal. So it sits up there, like so. Yeah, again, you can see that little bit of sprue still stuck there. That's not going to matter because when I glue that in, it's going to just melt down. And the other side is the same. A little groove in there. But it goes on that side. So again, I'm going to glue those into place. I'm going to glue the body onto the, onto the man. Okay. And then I'm going to come back for the next pieces. Right, so here's where we're at. Now look at the Space Marine helmet. There's a dirty mold line that I missed. But again, this goes back to what I said, what I said earlier. Once that's all dried and cured and models done, probably tomorrow I'll come in with a little sweet sanding sponge, give that gentle sand down, get the hobby get the uh, mold line remover, just give it a gentle scrape down and slowly get rid of that. Yeah, that looks like the only one. It's almost freestanding as well, which is good. Now the next thing to decide is what weapons to have. Now with this, you can't take one of these guys. Yeah, and a different weapon, you have to take both of them as a pair. Okay? Now I like those. I think they're absolutely fantastic. But with that said, I love this weapon as well. I love this weapon. I think it's absolutely fantastic. This weapon and a shoot gun was going to give him a bit more of an edge because they're still quite tasty in close combat. So I'm going to go with these two weapons the Melter Volta Combo, because I just I love that chainsaw underneath it. And I love this one as well. So I'm going to cut these two off, clean them down, and I'll show you how they go on. Pretty straightforward, but I'll show you how they go on. Right, so it's very straightforward. The little circle bit there, the circle bit there, that just slots on. You see, you can do it in different positions. I'm going to glue it up into this sort of position. Will I be able to get away with that with the shoulder pad? Should be able to. So I think that looks fantastic. And the other one's the same, so I'm going to glue the other one on. And I'll come back to you for the next piece. Here's where we're at so far. I think that looks absolutely fantastic. And that's very simple. All I've done is put the arm around at a different angle. It might be a little pain to get the shoulder pad in. We should be okay. So the next piece that's needed, looks like it's going to be the most annoying part of this bottle now is this chain. 
Now, I say in the most annoying part because it goes at the front of him, so this is going to be annoying to try and get into place. Anyway, I'm going to snip it off, clean it down, and I'll show you how it goes on. Right, so this bad boy just glues in either side of that little square bit in front of him, like so. Okay, so I'm going to glue that into place and come back for the next piece. And the next bit we need, I'm going to take the base off. Okay, so that's how that's how it sits on top of the base. Okay, because the flat side goes onto the base itself because he stands with the one foot on here and one foot over here somewhere. So I'm going to slip that off and glue that to the base. And the other thing we need is two shoulder pads. So there's three shoulder pads here, absolutely brilliant design. Or well, two of them are ones that's plain. So I'm going to take I'm going to take these two. The reason I'm taking these two is this one looks slightly smaller. Might be easier to get in the strange angle that I put them on. So I'm going to snip these off, clean these down. Snip this off, clean that and glue that to the base. And I'll show you how the shoulder pads go on, which is pretty self-explanatory. Right, so a bit of glue in there. The shoulder pad just should just... Because it doesn't. I'll force it in there. There we go. Now, I could, I could snip a bit of the, the top piece off to slide it in there a bit easier. But it's in there. It looks great. It's fantastic. And the other one goes on the other side. The other one shouldn't be no problem at all because I didn't really position the arm in any sort of fancy way. So now it's just to the head. Right, so the instructions are telling you to see with this head, this lad, or this lad, yeah? The saucer iron is supposed to be this one, or this one here, yeah? Now, correct me if I'm not mistaken, but this one here looks like a world of your head. It looks like butcher's nails on top, which is bizarre. But as this is a unique wargaming terrain, we're not going with those options. I'm going to blow your minds now, guys. I've got a plague bearer sprue in front of me. I'm going to take the champion's head. That's what I'm going for. Some of you are going to be like, what the hell are you doing now? I was going to go with the um, with, a, with a horror head, pink horror head. But then I figured out I'd have to glue one of the little heads in there first and then glue the horror head on top. So I'm going to clean this bad boy down. And then I'm going to glue it into his head. And there we have it. Gauss Lord of the Muck of Nurgle. Now I did have to glue a head in behind there, but because it's plastic, as soon as you cover the head in plastic glue, it starts to melt details away. I'm going to undercoat that black, you're not going to see down to there. This is going to look like a bit of neck and muscle coming out. But very, very simple. Very, and I even glued a little Nurgle on the front there. It's a little bit of a modification to the Nurgle's little base, which is a round little pot. I snipped it down and just glued it in front there. Absolutely fantastic. I love this. Now, I was looking for a demonet head. Same thing again. You can do a demonet head. The only thing with demonet heads is they have hair. So you'd have to try and get one that doesn't have hair that interferes with everything behind. Um, bloodlet head the same. The bloodlet head has the bit that comes through with the tongue. You might want to snip that down or go with the other trophy rack so you can have the head come through between. Yes, very, very, very simple, very straightforward. Difficulty rating for this guy, I would probably give him a difficult rating of maybe a two. It's not that difficult. The mold line is going to be the issue for me there because of the head I've gone for, but it's not a big major issue. Um, now with the heads, the heads are, I didn't show you how they go on, but it's very straightforward. There's a little ball bit that sits into that gap. Okay, they're all the same. It has a, a little bulbous seat. 
but I'm obviously all sits in the same. So guys, thank you for watching. This is actually a beautiful model. And I can't wait to put it into the boat because it's going to be an interesting one. Because I've put the Plague Bearer head onto it, it has to be painted Nogales colours. Okay? Rather than just doing it um, Black Legion. It has the mark of Nogal. So it's going to be an interesting interesting model. Interesting addition to the Chaos Space Marine Force that I have. The thing with this model as well, this kit in particular... Because I've done that now, I now have to get another four Endurance Lords. One Corn, Slanesh, Dezench, and one Undivided, just, you know, normal Lord without a mark. I then need to get another three of these kits after that, so seven kits altogether. The other three are then going to be the Sorcerers, which will be Dezench, Nogal, and Slanesh. But actually, probably a fourth one, get Undivided. But, um, yeah. So thank you for watching, guys. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. It costs you absolutely nothing and helps the channel out in a massive, massive way and turn your notifications on so you don't miss anything. For everyone else, you know, thank you for supporting the channel for as long as you have. It means a hell of a lot to me. Everyone, please smash the thumbs up button because then it triggers YouTube to share this video with more and more people and brings more and more people into this lovely channel's community, which is actually fantastic. Guys, thank you for watching. Until next time, take it easy.